clap our hands, find our seats. Burn in me, burn in me. Let the fire of the Holy One burn in me. Burn in me, burn in me. Let the fire of the Holy One burn in me. Oh, your words like a fire. Your words like a fire. Burning in my soul, burn up the dross, bring forth the gold, burn in me, burn in me, let the fire of the Holy One burn in me, burn in me, burn in me. Let the fire of the Holy One burn in me. Oh, you feel like a fire. We feel like a fire shut up in my bones. Consume me, Lord. Make me your own. Burn in me. Burn in me. Let the fire of the Holy Sing it out here in the fire this morning. Burn in me. Burn in me. Burn in me. Let the fire of the Holy One burn in me. Oh, your words like a fire. Your words like a fire burning in my soul. Of the dross. sing this song open the eyes of my lord open the eyes of my heart lord hey amen why don't we stand to our feet let's we are awake i know some of you had your coffee let's praise god open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i want to see you i want to see you Holy, 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 holy,
attitude of worship. Let's lift our hands. We're going to sing the song, I'm Forgiven. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. And I'm alive and well. Spirit is within me because you died in those again. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. And I'm alive and well. Spirit is within me because you died in the rose again. Amazing love, let's sing it out. Amazing love, how can it be? That you might be, you should die for me. Amazing love. I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor you, in all I do, I honor you, in all I do, in all I do, I honor you, the sing that I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven. Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you are condemned, and I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died in the rose and you see our maze of love, maze of love. How can it be that you might be in such a Days of love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you in all I do. All I do, I honor Jesus, you are my King. Sing it up. Oh, 
Oh, that you have mercy on us this morning, Lord God. Oh, your mercies that are renewed daily, Lord, we thank you. Amen. We're going to sing this song we haven't sang in a while. What a powerful song it is. It's called Jesus. There's a truth older than the ages. There is a power things yet to come. There is one all for our salvation. Jesus. There is a light. There is a light that overwhelms the darkness. There is a kingdom that forever reigns. There is a freedom from the chains that bind us. Jesus, Jesus, who walks on the water, who walks on the water, who speaks to the sea, who stands in the fire beside me. He roars. He roars like a lion, he bled as the lamb, he carries my feet in his hands. Jesus, there is a name, there is a name, I call in time to trouble, there is a song. Comforts in the night. There is a voice that calms the storm that rages. Jesus, Jesus, who walks? Who walks on the water? Who speaks to the sea? Who stands in the fire beside? Jesus, there was 
I'm like you. Jesus, there is none like you, Jesus. There is none. There is none like there is none like you, Jesus. Amen. Let's give God praise, church. In the name of Jesus, we come before you, Father. Careful to give you all praise and honor and glory. We thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary Street. We thank you for the redemption of our sins, oh God, that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Receiving help, God, in times of trouble, God, receiving your grace and favor. Praises unto your name, Lord. We thank you for all you're doing. Thank God. Amen. We want to go before the Lord in prayer. We're lifting up a number of needs. We're contending and believing God that he's going to minister and move in each and every one of our lives and situations. Many needs that have been brought before us all across this congregation. These are the names and the needs that you see behind me. On the screen, we're lifting up them by name, contending and believing that God is going to move on their behalf, that God is going to minister and help us. Many of these people are near and dear to our hearts, but we're praying for grace. We're praying for comfort, especially in hearts and lives that have lost loved ones recently. We want to pray God's grace and favor upon their lives, lifting them up specifically by name and remembering them uh, for prayer. We're lifting up the Sanchez family uh, uh, Mariana and Jesse Sanchez uh, and, and the family praying also for our fellowship all over the world. We're lifting them up as many things are taking place. We're believing God that as kingdom lines are advanced and as God gives us help in his kingdom, that God would strengthen us as laborers, the, the pastors, missionaries, especially from our church. We have many who have responded to the need that are out ministering the gospel in their own cities, starting up churches and pioneering these places. We want to lift up the Varguses in uh, Bakersfield. We're lifting up the Parsons in Eloy, lifting up also our missionary in the field, Pastor Jacob and his wife, Hosanna Salas, praying for healing in her body as well. The revival that God has done there uh, in that city, that God would carry it on and would help them, praying for healing for our sister and guidance and help in our brother's life, for the kids that are there, all the families that are functioning and ministering, uh, all the ministries that function out of our church, many uh, hearts and lives that are involved in other things, not just church service. We don't make this just about just coming to church, but we're involved in things and uh, pressing the kingdom of God forward. We want to pray for uh, uh, fruitfulness in each and every one of these ministries that God would help us. We want to pray for this morning's service that God's hand would be here and help us and encourage us and lift us up. I want to pray for our leadership in Prescott, our mother church in Prescott, Arizona. Uh, Pastor Greg, his wife, Lisa Mitchell, all the staff that's there. I want to mem remember them by name, lifting up our new converts, many people who have given their lives to Jesus Christ, many families, couples. I want to lift them up and pray that God helps them to make righteous decisions to serve Christ, that God would add these to uh, the church, the, uh, that they wouldn't just say a prayer, amen, but it would be a, a life-changing experience. God would help them, and God would encourage them, and they would uh, seek God, his will for their lives. I want to pray for the faithful saints here, all of you that make this your church home. We are grateful for you. We appreciate your faithfulness as we've endeavored. We've pressed on, amen, many battles. We have fought, but we are victorious, amen. Uh, they don't call this Victory Chapel for no reason. Hallelujah. I didn't come up with the name. It was already here when I got here. And I, amen. We stepped into victory and we're going to press victory through. Hallelujah. Until we see God move on our behalf. And we're going to contend. God says he gives grace and favor and help to those who press the battle at the gates. Amen. So let's cry out to God together. Let's pray together. I encourage you lift up your voice. If you have a need here. Uh, lift up your hand and, and signify that. Maybe you didn't write it down, but you have needs on your heart. And you would lift your hand and say, that's me, Pastor. I'm coming before God. We're going to pray together. Uh, when we subside, if my brother uh, Fernando can come to the front and open us up in a word of prayer this morning. Lift up your voice all across this place. Father in heaven, we are thankful to you, God. We believe in you. That you are the difference maker, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. God with us, Lord, this is who you are. This is what has been proclaimed. And we take you at your word, oh God, stepping out in faith, believing in you, God, for restoration, God, the mending of broken hearts, 
broken lives, God, broken families, Lord, that you would cause there to be healing poured out into each and every one of these lives, God, for you have come to heal the brokenhearted. You have come to set the captives free. You have come to proclaim liberty, God, to these who are in captivity. God, that you would pour out grace and favor, Lord, help and your uh, salvation in our lives, God. Do what we cannot do. Lord, Heavenly Father, we come before you by the blood of Jesus, lifting up every need in this congregation, spoken and unspoken, God. Lord, I pray deliverance, salvation. I pray healing for those that are sick in body, comfort for those, God, that are that lost loved ones, God, a peace that surpasses understanding, Father God. I pray that you would be liberal, that you would touch them right now, God. I pray for our pioneer works. God, those that are laboring out of this congregation, pour out revival in those cities. God, overshadow the families in those cities. God, I pray multiply, God, in those cities, Father God, with fruit that would remain and multiply. Lord, I pray right now in this service, Father God, that you would meet with us, that you would touch hearts and lives, God, that you would change them, God. We break the strongholds of the enemy. We break the strongholds of oppression. Lord, we claim the victory by the blood, God. We believe in you for the supernatural. God, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank God. We want to welcome you to Victory Chapel. Feel free to greet one another right there where you're sitting. Tell somebody, I'm glad you came to church. Maybe introduce yourself to someone you may not recognize. Thank God. Amen. We'd like to welcome everyone out to service as we begin to find our seats. God bless you and welcome to church this morning here at Victory Chapel. We're glad to see each and every one of you that have come to make this your church home. Perhaps you're visiting or you're returning from recently visiting us. We'd like to say welcome and encourage you to come. Those watching online on our online platform, we do welcome you. And we appreciate you joining us online, but we invite you to our in-person services here at church. We want to make you aware of some of our uh, things that are happening this week. Uh, we do have our weekly bulletin, but also the new calendars are out. And so grab yourself one for this month. Many things happening this month. And so uh, you make yourself aware of these and uh, available to them. The greatest ability is your availability. Amen. And so we appreciate all of you that make yourself available to all the things that we have going on here at the church. And we'd like to welcome all of you to be involved. Getting involved, amen, is one of the greatest assets to your salvation. It's what's going to help you being on the front lines. It's what helps you keep that cutting edge. It helps you from going dull, amen, uh, or losing effectiveness in your salvation. And so I encourage you. Uh, to see the bulletin. There's announcements on there. We just want to remind you of our regular schedule of services. We meet here every Sunday morning. We meet with the men first, whether that be donuts and discipleship or serious men's class. All men are welcome to that. Next week will be donuts and discipleship, 730 in the morning. And so I encourage you to come. This is a place for you to ask questions. Maybe you're reading your Bible throughout the week or God has impressed something on your heart. We can meet to uh, discuss that. This is a, just a platform for you to, uh, just for us as men to gather and have fellowship. I know throughout the week as we get busy, uh, that can be difficult, but there's that's one of the unique facets of our fellowship is Pastor Mitchell 
instilled into us to never despise the brotherhood. Amen. And so these uh, classes are valuable. And so I encourage you to come and be a part of these. 930, we meet for Sunday school. We just uh, started a new Bible study. Perhaps uh, you don't make uh, Sunday school or Bible study part of your morning worship on Sunday. Uh, when we start a new Bible study, that's always a great time to do so. The new Bible study is called Taking the Bait, Warring Against the Current uh, Culture and Capturing the Reality of the Truth of the Word of God, what God wants to give us. How many of you know whatever God speaks, whatever God intends? If you could please put up the uh, announcement for Bible study, please let people know that it's at 930, uh, Taking the Bait, if we can have that, our media folks. Yes, no, maybe. Anyways. That, start, that started this Sunday, and so just keep that in mind, and that'll be a great blessing for you. Then 10.30 is our regular morning service. Then uh, we do come back in the evening as our regular part of service is 6.30. We come back with 5.30 prayer. Also on uh, Sundays, we do have a class for new believers. If you've recently given your life to Jesus Christ or are working with somebody who has or you've recently rededicated your life, if you identify, how many of you know that in this day and age, that's one of the buzzwords, identifying with what you are, amen? There's some of you that are new converts, new believers. You're starting out at this life of salvation. This class is for you. And so I encourage you to come and be a part of this. It's 5 p.m. here at the church. Uh, we also have a slide for that. Maybe? No? Okay. Well, I guess we're not, you know, we're not going to have any pictures some of us were visual learners, you know, so we need the pictures, right? Some of us, we didn't read books at all unless it had pictures in it, right? Uh, and so uh, some of you, you wait for the movie to come out because it's a moving picture, right? I'm not going to read the book. I'll just wait for the movie to come out, right? And so uh, that's, that's how we are, amen? And so God bless us. We all learn at different levels. But uh, this class is for new believers, and so you can ask questions. Our brother Ralph, his wife Christina, they uh, head that up. And so if you have any questions, you can see them. That's every Sunday here at the church. A full schedule on Sunday, but God helps us and God blesses us. Um, then Monday, we do have our Live Again class here at the church. Uh, every Monday, it's a our addiction deliverance ministry. Perhaps there are people that you know that are battling this in their lives. This is faith-based. Uh, Jesus Christ, he says, uh, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And that's what we, uh, that's what we promote is that it's not just uh, it's not just one step, right? The first step that you have to make is make Jesus Christ Lord of your life, but then you continue walking. And so we take that understanding, that concept of the twelve-step program, but apply faith to it. And every step that you make it is a step in the right direction for Jesus Christ. And so this Live Again class is to orchestrate and and to put your life on the trajectory of living. Christ. Amen. Not just existing in this life and in this world. Uh, many of us, we just exist held bound by our addictions and by our past, perhaps, or by things of this world. But God says you can live and have life more abundantly. And so I encourage you to come. That's every Monday here at the church, 7 p.m. Our brother Sam, his wife, Yvette, Ariano, they, they head that up. And so I encourage you to be a part of that Tuesday song service practice here at the church. And then we uh, uh, will continue that this Tuesday, 6.30 meeting here. Also, instrument learning. If you want to learn an instrument, uh, we are making ourselves available for that. Some of you may have seen the drum set set up back there. That's not just to have a shiny drum set for all your kids to be tempted, right? I see all the kids, they walk by it and they don't, they're, you ever, you ever seen a hungry lion at the zoo, right? And they, they pick out the smallest person and they just lock eyes on that one. If I just, if this, if this glass wasn't in between you and me, boy, man, I'd be at you, right? That's how some of the kids walk by looking at that drum set. They're just like eyeballing it, tempted, right? Ready to go bang on the skids, amen? But some of you adults look at it and you're like, oh, it's a good thing Melly has it taken care of. Some of you, you want to learn drums? Come by. We'll teach you. All you got to do is learn how to keep a beat, right? Who knows? Maybe there's a gift inside of you that God wants to unlock. Come to song service practice, and that's a good way to get involved. Uh, maybe you don't even, you know, you want to sing the songs. You see the songs, and we put the words up there, but you don't know them. You just want to come and learn the songs. That's for you as well. So I encourage you, come by, and that'll be a great help to you on Tuesday, Wednesday night. Um, uh, 
Uh, this is our midweek power and praise service. Uh, come help us pray. I need you to help me pray. If there's, an, if there's anything that I can add, many of you wonder, what does pastor need? I need your prayers. I need you to pray for me. I need you to lift up my arms sometimes because the battle gets weary as my arms are lifted in a stance and a posture of aggression against the enemy. The war is being fought, amen, but I need people to help me pray. And so this is why we have prayer one hour before our services in the prayer room. The Bible says when the Holy Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost, they were all gathered together in one room. I know you like to pray in your own prayer closet and you have all the spiritual reasons as to why you don't join us in the back for prayer. But that's the prayer room. Louis, do me a favor, brother. Open up that curtain, bro. Let's show everybody where the prayer room is. Come on. In case you were wondering. Oh, we need to have the hallelujah chorus singing. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's why we need song service practice. Amen. Because no, we can't sing the hallelujah. That's the prayer room. Amen. There's a bunch of chairs in there. You find yourself a spot to pray. Come and join me in that room. That's the war room right there, baby. That's where we engage in battle. And so I need you to help me pray. Amen. Walls. Yes. Thank you, walls. We're having a great service today. Lights, walls. Come on, beloved. Is anybody here today? Anybody want to back me up, back their pastor up this morning? Come on. I need help. I got a, I got a shallow ego, you know? I need the church to help me out. Come on, beloved. <laughs> Oh, come on, church. I love you guys. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's all the announcements we're going to have at this time. Amen. Uh, let's give God praise as we uh, take the offering of the morning. Father God, we need you, Lord, to help us. God, establish your presence, your goodness, my God, in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank God for this opportunity to give this. We have worshiped. Amen. We've come into this place. To honor God. How many of you came this morning to honor God? Amen. Hallelujah. One of the ways that we worship and honor is obviously through songs. We've praised. We've articulated that with our words. We've uh, cried out to God together. Uh, we've lifted our hands. We've clapped. We've rejoiced. We've laughed. Amen. Some of us have even felt the sting of conviction sometimes. Amen. Just as we go throughout the service. But God always brings hope. Amen. That's the blessing is that God reveals to us things in our lives that we need to correct, that we need to make right with him. He doesn't expose these things into our lives to make us feel bad and to, you know, just think, oh, I'm such a miserable worm, you know. No, he exposes these things for the sake of healing. Conviction makes us feel bad, but it's always for the sake of healing. If you ever feel convicted or you feel condemned and there is no hope that's from hell that's not from god and so god always brings conviction and one of the areas that we can bless and honor god is in the area of finances this is an outward expression of what god is doing the appreciation that we have in our hearts for what god is doing in our lives for how god has saved us has redeemed us some of us been healed some of us, we need God to help us in the future. It depends on what we do in an offering. Is your worship connected to your wallet? Notice those, that's the word of the day, or that's the letter of the day. It's W. Worship and wallet. Right? Any old uh, Sesame Street fans in here, right? They had the letters of the day and then the number. The number is your tithe, the 10%. That's a minute. That's the, that's the gospel according to Snuffleupagus, <laughs> right? And so the tenth is the tithe. It's the tenth of your increase. That's what goes to God honorably because He's worthy of that. He created us. He gave us the ability to generate wealth, to make and earn a living. He's blessed us financially, whether that be through uh, government assistance in these tax days, amen, that we've increased. Have you honored God with that? Or did you go to the Filibertos and say, everybody gets a value meal, right? Did you feed the flesh first before honoring God? 
Beloved, we have to honor God with all of our increase, everything that God blesses us with. You didn't have it before. Now you have it. Will you honor God with your increase? That is right before God. But many of us, we've also made promises and pledges. We've taken pledges every six months. We take a pledge for world evangelism. That's the extra giving. Those are the seeds that are planted. The tithe is what I owe. The offering is the seed that I sow. That's how we have to look at it. Some of you think, oh, I'm tithing, so that's me planting seeds. No, you're just being right with God. The planting of seeds comes in the offering, comes in the extra giving, comes in the beyond. And it's not, you know, that you have to give this extravagant amount beyond what God is actually looking for is the heart. Do you believe God for your future, for your well-being in the future? Do you believe that he can help you, that he can bring breakthrough? Because today's offerings are tomorrow's reference points. When God does bring that breakthrough, God does bring that miracle into your life. And what we have this morning is an opportunity for us to invest in what God is doing. We have a missionary out in the field. The first of the month has come. He sent his projection. How many of you know he's dependent on us? To follow through because we've sent him. And it's not just bon voyage, Jacob. I te watcho, homie. It's no, I'm going to invest in what you're doing, Jacob. Because I believe in what we are. And who we are. We go into all the world and we preach the gospel. I may never be able to go to Samora, but my finances can. Maybe today's miracle in, or tomorrow's miracle in your life is dependent on what you do in the offering. Let's bow our heads this morning as we give. Let's worship God together. Let's honor him for what he's worth. A tenth belongs to the Lord, but offerings besides. Honor God with your pledges, with what you've promised to the Lord. Let's not be uh, uh, ignorant towards this or uh, uh, just push it aside. This is of absolute importance because it's an outward expression of worship. He's worthy. He's worth it. And it's going to be connected to my wallet. Amen. Let's bow our heads. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Louis, some of you ask God's blessing on both gift and the giver. Amen. God bless you as you give. Remember all the ways that you can contribute online through Zelle or cold hard cash. If you're making a check, make it out to Victory Chapel. God bless you as you give. It's nothing that I need that he won't supply. It's nothing that I need that he won't provide. If I believe, if I believe, there's nothing that I need that he won't provide. There's nothing that I need that he won't supply. If I believe, so I say, so I say to this mountain, move. I say to this mountain, get out of my way. I say to this mountain, move. I say to this mountain, get out of my way. I say to this mountain, move. I to this mountain, get out of my way. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. God. Amen. Thank you, musicians. Those on the platform appreciate your ministry. Amen. It would be great to see many of you up here with me. Amen. As we set the platform for what God is about to do, those involved in worship, I appreciate you. Amen. And so we want to make that available to you. Don't forget song service practice on Tuesdays. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to go there in the Word of God, a very familiar portion of Scripture that we've often read. But I believe it lends to uh, this morning. Um, as a pastor, I'm involved in many different things of life. There's many different people that require my help. And so being full-time pastor allows me and gives me the opportunity to go and uh, not just minister in the church or not just uh, work at the church. And this is my primary job. Amen. But I've given myself to the needs of the people. Pastor Mitchell used to say that the needs of the congregation or the needs of the people in your city become the needs of the pastor. 
And there are many needs that, that come across my desk, that come through my phone, as people would call, asking for help. One such, uh, I guess, situation or thing that happened recently is we were having revival with evangelist Artie Marin earlier in uh, February, in the beginning of February, we had that revival. Many people came in, many people saved, God was moving. And so, you know, there's people that come in throughout revival, right? That get invited, the uh, co-workers, family, friends, uh, people we go to school with, or just people that receive the flyer that would come uh, by way of invitation. And so there's a lot of new faces, right? And so I don't know everyone that comes in, right? They're, and so I, I try to make it a point to get to meet people. One such individual that was here, she was standing at this corner when I met her. Her name was Beverly. Miss Beverly was in town because of a tragedy. A tragedy brought her into Casa Grande. She's actually from Norfolk, Virginia. And Miss Beverly was here and she's weeping at the altar. And some of the ladies were talking to her and just helping her, ministering to her. Come to find out, Miss Beverly just got saved four years ago in the church at a, at a Potter's House church, part of our fellowship in Norfolk, Virginia. Pastor Carlos Morales, uh, no relation. Um, you know, you know, oh, he's Morales. That, that, that's, your, that, that's your brother, right? No, your primo, no, your cousin, no, your nana, no, no relation at all. Us Morales is, we're like the Joneses, and the Joneses would know what I'm talking about is everybody's a Jones, and everybody, in, in Mexicans, um, everybody's a Morales, right? Even the new Spider-Man, hallelujah, is Morales. <laughs> and so, uh, it's a common last name, but she, go, she just started going to the church. Well, her son lived here in Casa Grande. Son's name is Michael. He married a girl here that was from here. Her name is Kylie. And Miss Beverly was in town because her son Michael had just passed away. He got diagnosed with leukemia a few years back, fought as well as he could. 34 years old, succumbed to this disease. Cancer is a cruel disease, how many of you know? You watch your loved ones deteriorate as Miss Beverly did. And so she was in town that week of revival because her son had just passed away. And she was here just doing the arrangements, helping her ex-husband and the, and the wife, is her daughter-in-law, just figure out the arrangements. And so she came. She came to the revival services, was helped. God ministered to her. And then she went back home. I didn't hear from her. We we just told her, you know, God bless you. We hope our prayers are with you. Well, I get a phone call from Miss Kylie, which is Michael's wife. This is Beverly's daughter-in-law. She lives here in Casa Grande. And she says, we're going to be having a, a celebration of life from Michael. Would you mind coming and just speaking a few words? We don't have anybody to do that. So a lot of people, they like to have for closure, you know, during these types of services, memorial services, they like to have some form of clergy come and, and just speak. I don't know if it's for closure. I don't know if it's for the sake of trying to find some sort of comfort in these times of loss. But I said yes. And so it was yesterday. So he was ex-military, uh, did time in Afghanistan, fought for our freedom. And, uh, he, you know, he just loved life. But I have no idea who this family is. Like I said, I just met them. I met the mom. And the only reason I said yes was for mama. Because I got a mama, right? And I would want somebody to help my mama in a time of loss if her, if she ever, God forbid, lost a child. And so I just wanted to be that blessing to Miss Beverly. And on behalf of Miss Beverly and the fellowship, because how many of you know fellowship is family? And family takes care of each other. And I may not have known Miss Beverly or ever had a conversation with Michael or Kylie or any of the other family members that I met yesterday, but I do know Jesus. And I know that Jesus Christ came to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus Christ came to set the captives free and to live as Christ and to die as gain. Those who live for Jesus are the only ones that can make this boast. Oh, death, where is your sting? 
Only those who have made Jesus Christ a reality in their life and live for Jesus and make choices in the vein of God's will and in, with the purpose and the plans and surrender themselves to the will of Jesus. Those are the only ones that can make this boast. Death, where is your sting? And if I could have went and just, and just alleviated the sting of death for a moment for that family, then it was well worth it. So I went yesterday, I spoke a few moments on behalf of an individual that I knew nothing about for a family that was broken and experiencing this time of loss and tragedy. Just to administer this message, oh death, where is your sting? Because when Jesus Christ came, that's what he came to alleviate, was the sting of death, was the pain that we have to suffer as sinners. For the brokenness and the loss that we may experience through the death of loved ones as we watch people around us die, as we watch a world die, many of them not knowing Jesus Christ and the anguish of Miss Beverly's soul. As she was here crying out to a God who is her only source of refuge, who is her only source of comfort in this tragic time thing that brought so much agony into her life was, did my son make a decision for Jesus Christ? Because she says, Pastor, I, I, I just got saved four years ago, and I called her, and I talked to her, and I said, Miss Beverly, did you ever witness to your son? She said, absolutely. I told him all the time about Jesus. I said, Miss Beverly, did you pray for your son? She says, absolutely. Every day I prayed for my family. I prayed for my loved ones. So I said, Miss Beverly, I don't believe in a God that is so cruel that he wouldn't listen to the prayers of a loving mother. And God deals with us. And I said, I'm not God. I'm not the author and the finisher of our faith. Only he is. I don't know what eternity holds for us, but what I do know is Jesus Christ. And I know that Jesus Christ deals with us. The spirit of the living God deals with us till our very last breath to give us a hope for our future, to give us a hope that this life is not the end, that we will step into eternity as victors, victorious, because death, where is your sting? It's not here. Because to live is Christ and to die is gain. And Miss Beverly held that, and she says, thank you, Pastor. If there's one thing that you can do, Pastor, please, 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 please. I can't be there, but could you pull an altar call? I said, Miss Beverly, I said, anytime I get a chance to minister, I said, I always pull an altar call. And I said, you have my word, I'll, 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 I'll pull an altar call. And here I am in a stranger's home, ministering the gospel, and I pull an altar call. And people got saved. Because out of death always comes life through Jesus Christ. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50, it says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery, that we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when the corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immorality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to consider with you for a few moments the great separation. From the very creation of mankind, the plan that God had for us was for things to be good. As he spoke things into existence, his plan for humanity wasn't to go throughout the misery 
of experienced loss, the pains and the heartaches that we go through, the betrayals of life, the violations that we feel, the sicknesses and the diseases that beat us down and wear us out. God says, that was not my original intention. My intention was for goodness. My intention was for paradise. My intention for you was relationship with each other, but ultimately relationship with God the Father. We find that in the book of Genesis, in the book of beginnings. God says, I'm not, I didn't create you just to exist. I created you to live. I created you to have life and have it more abundantly. Within the seed carries the life is what the Bible says. Not only to have life, but to multiply. To experience the joy of seeing your life be blessed. God designed us to reflect Him and His character. Genesis 1.27, so God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created him male and female. He created them. Genesis 5.1, this is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. We were created so that we could not only have the spirit of God in us, but that it would reflect to the rest of humanity the glory of the creator, the glory of his goodness, the glory of his creation. We were to experience it, enjoy it. Not be held bound and down by the sicknesses and the stinking allergies. Why would all the beautiful flowers grow in the desert and then I suffer all mocoso? Right? Oh, dear Lord, Ditas, I pray right now. When we're trying to just live life, man, you can't even taste anything because our factory glands are all clogged up. Taste buds all messed up. Why would we suffer through God's creation when he intended us to enjoy it? We were the crown jewel of creation. God spoke everything into existence with mere words. He created the beauty of all that we see in nature, the wonder of the universe, the stars. The Bible says he threw them out with the palm of his hand. And he knows the name of each one. But then when it talks about the creation of humanity, it says he formed him. That means his hand was involved in your creation. His hand extended down from heaven to make you. And us men, we kind of get the raw deal of the end. You know, we get the, we kind of get the, the, the bummer end of the stick, right? Because it says out of the dust of the earth, he just molded us up. Us men, just this clump of mud. Just said, breathe, clump of mud. Here I am, and I'm a little bit more muddier than others because of my skin color, you know. Some of you were made with white sands. I was made with, the, you know, the little bit of dark tan sand or sand tan. Hmm? <laughs> and God says, I created you out of the dirt. But then it talks about ma- woman. And where with man, he just formed us with woman. He says he fashioned her. With woman, he took a little bit more time. And he says, you're beautiful, you're wonderful. And he gave the beautiful thing to man and said, help this, help this boy, please. Right? Because that's what he created woman to be is a helpmate to the man. He created them a little bit more smarter than us, but he didn't tell them that, but we know. You know why you're smarter than us? It's so that you can help me. Help us, poor dum-dums. That is called the male race sometimes. Knuckleheads. Life was intended to be connected. The most important relationship we have is with our spouses. We need to cherish that relationship, breathe life into it, help each other out. Keeping God at the center. The minute we remove God out of the equation, as we read in the book of Genesis, that's the moment we step into danger. That's the moment we place ourselves in the way of judgment. Because in the garden, that's what we read. Something went wrong. 
disobedience, sin, moving away, doing what they wanted to do rather than what God told them what to do. God told them, don't touch of this tree. I gave you everything else in the garden. I gave you paradise. But Satan came in and brought deception into mankind. Just sowed a seed of doubt. And told humanity, God is holding out on you. He won't give you everything. And in disobedience, we believe the lie of hell. And we said, I'm going to do what I want to do and not what God says for me to do. And in that moment, separation was brought. Between holy God and now disobedient, ungrateful, chipilon. Humanity. We threw a fit against God. It says, you know, give me what I want. Anybody ever see a kid throw a fit when the parent tells him no in the store? It's just something in all of us as parents. It's like, oh, my hand is itching, dude. I got my bell. You want to borrow it right now, man? You want to go, come on, man. Kid throwing a fit when they tell him no. You can learn a lot from somebody when you tell them no. Because that's not just kids that are throwing fits. There's a lot of Christians that throw fits and get angry at God or get angry at the representative of God, the leadership, pastors and individuals that God places in our lives to help us where once, oh, there's so much wisdom and grace that flows from their life. Oh, now he's the enemy. He's Satan. He's Beelzebub himself. I can't follow that. What changed? Could it be that we became like Adam and Eve and we says, I want to do what I want. Not what God says. And because of this disobedience, the original plan that God intended for things to be good was destroyed. And God brought a separation. He removed them out of paradise. And the Bible says he placed angels at the gate of the Garden of Eden. Not to keep them out, not to kick them out and say, you're not welcome here anymore. Go kick rocks. But you know the reason why God put angels at the gate of the garden? Was so, I'm glad you asked, sis. Thank you. Amen. Was so that Adam and Eve didn't make the same mistake twice. So that they could move on from that mistake never to return back to it but to repent of it allow God to wash them clean because in that moment God says now there's things that have to suffer for your sin I don't want you to suffer but what must suffer is something innocent to take its place for the guilty and that's where sacrifice was brought in it was God himself that instituted this way of atoning for the sin, of washing the sin clean. Because we were stained at that moment. We were dirty. We, and then Adam and Eve still wanting to do things on their own. They try to cover it up themselves. Right? They, Adam and Eve had the first fashion show and they sewed fig leaves together and they covered their nakedness because at that time, at that moment when sin entered in, so did shame, so did guilt, so did condemnation. So did the pain of the past. So did darkness. So did affliction. So did sickness and disease, corruption, as the scripture said, entered in because of sin. And where we try to cover it up ourselves, we try to atone for it ourselves. Some of you are sowing, sig sowing fig leaves for yourself right now in the form of drugs and alcohol, relationships. You're trying to cover up the, the pain and the guilt yourself, but God is still saying today, that's not enough. You need the blood of something innocent. And where once it was the blood of the sacrifice, the pure animal that had to die and be brought to the priest and the altar. And all these rituals had to take place. Jesus Christ says, no, I'm going to become the ultimate sacrifice for them. And I'm going to give my life wholly for them because it's hard. The life of sin is a hard life. 
the one who rules over that kingdom of sin and over the worldliness and darkness of, of, of the generation we live in. He's a cruel taskmaster. And we, he, all he wants to do is enslave us and keep us in bondage and keep death from coming around and hurting us. But Jesus Christ came in and said, I am willing to pay the price for them. They're guilty, but I'm innocent. God, let me take their place. And I'll live the life that they're intended to live when you know, they weren't satisfied because we talked about intention, right? God's intention. He says, whatever I intend for your life, not only do I intend to make it a plan and a plan for you, but I intend on completing it. And that's why Jesus Christ came was to return us to God's original intention. To remove the separation. To once again give us a way to where we can Go to God, our Heavenly Father, and be in right relationship with Him. Any of you ever have strained relationships with your Father? It's agonizing. It's painful. There's unforgiveness, and there's bitterness, and there's resentment. And many times the Father starts it, initiates the wounds. Father wounds. There's a whole study in psychology, given over to this study of the father wounds. But in this scenario, it was the sons of disobedience that wounded the father's heart. Where it was a son that had to come down and make a way for us to be right with the father. Again, a son that was in right relationship, Jesus. A son that lived in obedience where the first son, Adam, messed up royally and messed it all up for the rest of us. The second son, Jesus Christ, had to come in to make a way for us to be right with the father. You know the father loves you. Your heavenly father is not your earthly father. Just talking this morning with men in the serious men's class. And they said, man, pastor, that was one thing we were talking about is like authority figures. You know why most people have problems with authority figures? It's because the ultimate source of authority, the father, violated their trust. So now that begins to bleed out into every relationship. We see the cops and immediately it's 10 and 2. 10 and 2. Don't make eye contact. Act white, homie. Act white. They're next. Hello, officer. Good to see you. Officer, can I buy you a coffee, a donut or something? And we've done nothing wrong. But we feel a guilt. Some, it's like, dude, I, I haven't had run-ins with the law in so many years and still it's like this sinking feeling comes anytime I see the cherries and berries. Or worse, we begin to compare ourselves when, these, when we see the cherries and berries up afar and you're, you're not even on your way that way, but you want to be chismoso to see who got in trouble. Oh, do I know them? Oh, whose car is that, right? Like, at least I'm not that guy. Yeah, now you didn't get caught this time. But comparison is always going to bring self-doubt, self-hatred. We try to justify our sins and never going to the Father in honesty of heart, to the true one who could bring forgiveness. Right now we want to, oh, I'm not, I'm not as bad as that, brother. Well, at least I'm not doing that. Yeah, but what are you doing that violates your relationship with the Father? Because it's us that wound the Father. And it's us that put the Son on the cross. The people want to walk around with religious trinkets and crucifixes. And God bless you if you do. But why would you want to remind the Father of what you did to His Son? Oh, it's just a reminder of what Jesus did for me. Really, if Jesus died in the electric chair, would you wear an electric chair?
because that's what the cross was. It was a means of punishment. It was an execution. It was a means of execution and death. It was a means of suffering. And it wasn't those Roman soldiers that put him on the cross. It was our sins. It was us. We put him on the cross. It was our disobedience. It was our wickedness. It was the things that we knew to do right and we still chose to do wrong. That's what put him on the cross. And in that moment, he still forgave us. And he says, Father, they don't know what they're doing. He suffered once for all for the sake of bringing us back into right relationship. For the sake of removing separation. And giving us access to God the Father. The Bible tells us that for the joy set before him, Hebrews 12.2, uh, 12, we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And now he has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It wasn't that Jesus was this sadomasochist and wanted to endure the punishment. He even said it himself. And by the way, tonight I'm starting a sermon series entitled The Cup of Crucifixion. In this Easter season, I encourage you to come tonight and figure out what that was all about. Jesus, he even said it himself in the garden. God, if this cup is able to pass from me, Lord, let, if there's any other way that humanity can be saved, that this separation can be removed, any other way, God, show me now. Because I don't want to go through this. But nevertheless, not my will, Lord. Your will be done. And he drank from that cup so that we could be saved. And the joy that this scripture speaks about, it wasn't from him going through the cross and suffering. It was for the joy of being able to know and redeem you and me. It was for the sake of forgiveness. It was for the sake of mercy. It was for the sake of healing. That even though we were the ones that offended God, we were the ones that wounded him. We were the one. It was our sins that put him on the cross. It was us that caused the father to watch his son go through that. That the son says, we're going to make a way. So that death isn't painful anymore for them. But that through Jesus Christ. We could have the victory even through death. To live is Christ and to die is gain. It's to win. It's to have victory. Not because we're anything spectacular or we're these incredible specimens of goodness. And if we were to really, if, if we were to take a snapshot of your heart and what's inside of it and put it up on this screen, would you want everybody to see it? <laughs> That laugh, that was a nervous laugh right there. <laughs> and our sister just laughed the way we were all supposed to laugh. <laughs> no, don't look in there. It's dark and decrepit and ugly and cold and clammy. But I love it. But Jesus died to give us relationship benefits. How many of you ever heard this saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And that statement is so true in salvation because we can get to know the savior of our lives, Jesus Christ. Our text shows us the benefits of being in relationship with God. That in true relationship with Jesus Christ, we can make this boast that we find in our text, death, where is your sting? For many, death is the final blow. But for a believer in Jesus Christ, for one who has made a decision to turn away from their sin and repentance and make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of their lives, death is actually the start of living. Because I died to myself. The old man died. But who I live for now is Jesus Christ. And his resurrection power lives within me. And it motivates me to keep moving forward. It motivates me to tell somebody else about it. It's the joy that has come into my life that this world couldn't bring into my life. 
It's the peace that I have because now I know the Prince of Peace and I live in his kingdom. It's a peace that surpasses understanding. When everybody else is wigging out and freaking out about the chaos and the current world events and what's happening in the home, I have a victory because of my Jesus Christ. I trust in him. I live for him. I make decisions based off of, is this going to please Christ or is it going to remove me from his grace? I serve in the kingdom of the king. People ask me, what do you do for a living? And instead of answering that I'm a pastor now, I say, I work for the king. I serve the king. They look at me kind of crazy like the king of England? Charles? What's he like? I have no idea because I'm not working for that king. I'm working for the king of kings. Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, my savior who is enthroned, the Bible says seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession on my behalf. Why? Because I bear now the spirit of adoption. That the blood that runs and coerces through my veins is not the blood of Angel Morales anymore. Thank goodness, goodness gracious, that blood is like molasses, like a thick molasses. Ugly, dark, like motor oil when you change it. Oh, Lord. Save me from this wretched man that I am, God. Let there be less of me and more of you, God, always. And the blood that coerces through my veins is now the blood of Jesus Christ because the blood of bulls and goats, it couldn't cut it. Only the blood of Jesus could set me free, could make me whole, could make me brand new. And my spiritual DNA, my spiritual person, the inner man, is no longer perishing, but he's thriving because the blood of Jesus, that's my bloodline, that's my DNA. And it can be yours because Jesus Christ came to do this for all of us. Thank God, hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Let it not just be the sister. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's just worship God. Hallelujah. Don't clap. I want you to lift your voices. Worthy is the Lamb of God that was slain. Oh, God, thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary's tree, God, that we can be renewed. We can be set free, God. We can be made whole. God, you have made a way in this world, God. Where there seems to be no way, God, you have brought a way, Father. And we are grateful unto you, Lord. For we know that the greater things, the best is still yet to come, Lord. And you would guide us into your righteousness. And you've given us relationship benefits through repentance, God. That you can change our mind. You can change our hearts. You can rescue even the worst of us, Lord. And give us hope for our eternity. If some of you were uncomfortable with that or couldn't lift your own voice, you're not going to like heaven very much. Because the Bible says that heaven is all about lifting our voices, worshiping the Lamb, Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that he's going to be presented to us and he's going to bear the wounds. And he's going to look like a lamb that was destroyed for us, bloodied. But how many of you know that blood isn't going to be his? The blood is going to be of the enemy that he's vanquished. And let it be the blood of Jesus that courses in my body, that cleanses me and washes me clean. But the blood that's on my knuckles, you should see the other guy, homie. Because I came out and I stomped on some demon heads, man. And I waged hell against hell or waged war against hell and against the demonic because enough is enough i'm not willing that the enemy should rip off any more of our brethren of our family i'm gonna fight and the blood that my sword is dipped in is the blood of the enemy as i lived in victory and i lived in the spirit of god he powered my life. He saved me, rescued me. Not so that I could become a butcher and chop everybody up, but that I could be a surgeon. 
use the word of God to help bring healing and hope so I can bring this message. Death, where is your state? It's not here. Because to live is Christ and to die is gain. Let's bow our heads all across this place. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing. Revelations 21, 4 through 5. And God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. And there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And then he who sat on the throne, Jesus Christ, says, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write these words down on your heart for they are true and faithful. Maybe you're in this place and you don't know Jesus and the sting of death is a reality in your life. The pain of death is, is all too true and we go throughout it in life and, and God says, I don't want that to be your portion in life. I want you to experience new life. And this new life is only found in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that whoever is in Christ is a new creation. Old things passed away and everything becomes new. And if you want that in your life, you want the, the blood of Jesus Christ to wash you clean. You're sick of doing things your own way. You recognize I've tried to do it my own way and all it's done is hurt me and harm me and affect those around me. But I want Jesus Christ to ultimately be my healing, be my cleansing power and be my salvation. And I need it to help me in this place. You're here unsaved or backslidden. Lift your hand. You know who you are. Thank God. I see your hand. Come to the front. I see this hand. Come to the front. As you're lifting your hand, just make your way to the front. God bless you. God's going to help you. My brother here, all across this place, just stand here. We're going to have somebody pray. A brother pray here. A brother pray here. Thank God. Hearts are responding. Just kneel down right here. Just lead them in a sinner's prayer. If you could pray here, Sam. God bless you. Mark, God bless you, man. God's going to help you, brother. Just kneel down right here, man. Oh, Father God, help my brother right now. In the name of Jesus, touch his life. God, bring comfort and grace into my brother God oh remove this sting right now father God let there be grace and comfort in his life Touch his just kneel down right here say I'm gonna help you pray shut up I came in amen let's stand to our feet all across this place these altars are open beloved if God dealt with you at any moment in this service you come and do business with God you let the Holy Spirit help you like I said, condemnation is of hell. It's not for you. The death that you see, that maybe there's things around you that you recognize are dying. That's what hell wants to bring. Hell wants to bring death. Hell wants to put things in tombs and board it up and tell you that there's no hope. But in Jesus Christ, there is always hope. And oh, that I would be like proclaiming the words of hope like Jesus did before the tomb of Lazarus and cry out, Lazarus, come forth. That's what I'm crying out to you, beloved, all across this place. Come forth and experience life. Hallelujah. As these are praying, we're going to give these time. Brother, if you just help us all across this place. Hallelujah. For he is Lord. Lord. He's risen from the dead and he is Lord every knee shall bow every tongue confess that Jesus Christ Oh, for he is Lord, he is Lord. Let's sing it one more time. Oh, he is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
Amen. Let's give God praise together, church. Father, we do love you, God, and we thank you. Father, your word is living, God. Your word is true. Your word is a lamp unto our feet, God. Bring comfort and grace, God, in this time of difficulty, Lord, of your people. God, help us in this place, God, as your people would come before you, God. Breathe life and life more abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to be dismissed all across this place, allow you to go your way. We are having a meeting, though, right after service. Uh, if you're interested, we're having a Easter play. But I need help. I need musicians. I need actors. I need those who could just lend a hand, all hands on deck as we uh, do this. And so if you want to stay and be a part of this meeting, going to be held right after church. And so uh, if you want to go, you're free to go your way. Uh, but if you want to stay and be a part of this, it'll be quick. And so I know many of you are hungry. Amen. So I won't take up all of your time. So you can go eat lunch. But if you want to help out, uh, if you could put the, the slide up there for the play. It's called Resurrection. It's an Easter story, uh, the story of the crucifixion. But ultimately, the power of, the, of that story, amen, is the resurrection. Amen. Jesus died and he was put into a tomb. And three days later, he resurrected from the grave. Amen. Jesus dying was God writing a check for us to pay the debt for our sin. But him resurrecting means that the check didn't bounce. Hallelujah. Thank God it wasn't a hot check. It wasn't made out of rubber. Hallelujah. His resurrection means that the check cleared. Hallelujah. And our sins are forgiven. And so if you're interested in this, you're welcome to stay. Amen. And be a part of this. But we're going to let you go your way. You continue praying. As long as you need to, we need actors. Amen. Maybe you've never tried your hand at acting, but you want to. Hallelujah. This would be a great opportunity. But most of all, I need a crowd because part of this, part of the, uh, it, it starts with the bang. And just to give you a little quick synopsis, it starts with the crucifixion, with Jesus coming down the center aisle with a Roman soldier beating him with the crowd chanting crucify, but it's just Jesus and the Roman soldiers in the beginning. But as Jesus makes his way down, people start coming from the crowd, regular people in regular clothes that are part of the play. And they start saying crucify him. And they start joining from behind, walking up to the stage. Because like I said, Jesus Christ didn't just die for sins. He died covered in our sins, but so that we could go free and we could experience the power of the resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to be dismissed. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Sam Mariano, ask God's blessing as we're dismissed. Yes, salvation, Lord. Amen. God bless you as you go your way. You go in victory. Amen. And uh, go sit down, dude. It's not time for it, okay? The service isn't over. You don't do that. Come back tonight, 5 o'clock, new converts class, 5.30. Prayer, and then 6.30 service starts. We have children's church also for the kiddos, amen? God bless you as you go.